Hi, I'm Don Boomgarden, president of St. Joseph's College of New York, and I'd like to welcome you to St. Joseph's College Living Our Mission. Thank you for joining us for today's program. We're going to be discussing student life and the student experiences during the COVID-19 crisis. At St. Joseph's College, we wanted to make the transition from on-ground learning to completely remote during a global pandemic as seamless as possible for our students. It was not an easy task. And as we were all wading through unknown territory together, through a series of virtual workshops, seminars, and events, we've been able to continue to offer a full collegiate experience to our students. Today, to speak more about this is Janelle Hill, Associate Vice President for Student Life, and Alexandra Romanoff, Vice President of SJC Long Island Student Government Association and Chairperson for Student Orientation. So I wanna welcome both of you today. So happy to see you. Um, our life on campus is starting to come back. We're starting to roll towards the fall semester where we're gonna have some limited on-ground opportunities for students. Uh, but one of the things we've had to do is shift to be completely remote. And so Janelle, I wanna start with you. I, I mean, you just joined us a few months ago and mm -hmm. here you are. And the very first thing you have to do is help us to shift into a whole new modality. How has that been for you? So it's been very interesting times, I think for all of us. Um, what's been great, I think, is been the adapt adaptability and flexibility of both the staff and the students. Mm -hmm. I think if nothing else, it has shown me, especially the community that SJC has built is that the students are very open, they understand, they appreciate how the staff has been supportive. That's a lot of the feed that back that I've been hearing, but it's also been hard, right? It's been challenging for our students. Our students are in unknown territory as well as we are. And so I know that for us, it's important for us to reassure that this semester, this year, the past semester, they were as successful as they could be. So offering our services virtually, you know, going into being creative and innovative in different ways that we haven't been prior, um, really has been our goal. And, you know, I've been fortunate to work with the staff and student life and the staff on campus to really look at what we do and how we do it so that we could serve our students and hopefully have them have a great year. Well, I, I can say uh, with, with great certitude, this is my fourth year now as president that the students at St. Joseph's College are fantastic. Yes. Uh, and I don't just say that because Alexander's <laughs> here with us, but it's the truth. I've, I've taught and worked at so many schools and I have to say, I love my students. They are so dedicated to the college. They have such great spirit and they're so intelligent. Uh, many of them are coming from a background where they've had to work very hard to be here. Mm -hmm. Some of them are even working as they are here to come to St. Joseph's. And so there's not any sense of entitlement with mm -hmm. our students. They're here because they want to learn and, and they expect and they do get a really high quality experience. So we're trying to do that in this new remote environment. And of course, student life is a really critical part of this. Mm -hmm. People say, well, Don, uh, how can your remote courses possibly be as good as your on ground courses? And one of the first things I say is, well, remember, it's not just a course mm -hmm. because the students are also going to have a component of student life uh, reaching into their world to help deal with some of the issues they're facing. So what are some of the things that Student Life is planning on doing virtually with our students this year? Yes, so all of our services are going virtual. So that's counseling, career, our campus ministry team. He's been working really well and trying to do new initiatives with his YouTube channel and getting student conversations going. Uh, we're looking at different types of way to engage the students in student life and student involvement. And as um, Alexandria knows, working with SGA, with the clubs and organizations, organizations. We're virtually still having club meetings so students can still get involved in those ways as well as our orientation and our freshman seminar. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at a hybrid model that would allow students to still connect to campus but also still gain all of the things that they need to be successful this year in the course through the online module mm -hmm. as well. And so we're really thinking about this in a creative way but we want to meet the students where they are, right? So we want to be able to come to them both here on campus if they're able to make it to campus, but then also in their living rooms or on their phones or however they're um, reaching us to really be able to have access mm -hmm. to us. And I think that's important because I think at this time, because there's so much unknown, knowing that they can have staff around that's able to support them mm -hmm. and guide them and assist them to be, to be able to do what they do, I think mm -hmm. is important. Well, you and the members of, of your staff, of your team of Student Life, sometimes have the strongest bonds with the students. And so as much as we value, you know, the educational aspect of our school and the professor 
uh, working hard with their students. We also have an entire team of, of staff members in student life who also have an incredibly powerful impact on the lives of the students. So we have a student here, Alexandra. So tell, tell me a little bit about how was it in March when we shifted and, and maybe you could describe that experience and then talk a little bit about how it's been since then. Um, well, it was definitely a new experience in comparison to my first two years at the college. Um, I really was just missing seeing everyone and the in-person learning that I've been used to my whole life. I was really just trying to put like my best foot forward and make the most out of the situation because there was nothing I could really do um, in the time being. Um, and I felt in regards to like my classes, all my professors were so great and they were always easily accessible via like email and our Zoom calls. So um, it was awesome to have them guide me along that journey of remote learning, which I was completely new to. Um, and re in regards to student life, as a member of student government, we did transition to the virtual events and the meetings. Um, and I feel that we were pretty successful, but it was definitely a challenge to um, make that change. But um, I do feel that we were very successful and um, I'm just really looking forward to this fall. And I feel like having that experience in the spring, although it wasn't ideal, um, I think we're gonna be much better prepared for the fall considering that we're not fully on campus and we are gonna have very like virtual modalities and stuff like that. So um, I feel like we will be prepared for it. When we closed the college in March, um, what courses what, what courses did you take in the spring semester? Um, in the spring, well, I am a child study major, so I'm looking to become a teacher. Um, I was taking um, two child study courses and I was finishing my core requirements. So. Um, I was in a history class, um, but in regards to my child study classes, it was definitely um, an obstacle for me, I think, to um, finish my observation hours um, virtually, watching like videos um, rather than actually being in the classroom setting. Um, but I kind of just had to adjust as well as all of my fellow child study majors and fellow SJC students. Um, so I. I think it was still great. But that's a big adjustment, right? Yeah. Because I mean, part of part of becoming a teacher is watching others teach and being in the classroom with them. And in a strange way, you kind of did that even virtually because unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna have to continue this virtual approach to teaching at least for a few months. Mm -hmm. And perhaps uh, it could happen again, right? And so this way you'll be better prepared. You'll have actually experienced yourself kind of from both sides of the desk. What was it like, you know, in terms of the the um, um, conversations that, that you had, you know, with your friends about? Uh, did you find it harder to 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 do your coursework and your other courses are easier? How, how did that how did that go for um, you? The transition, I personally didn't find it to be too difficult. Uh -huh. Um, I'm pretty like familiar with like technology and Canvas that we use. Um, I know it wasn't the same for everyone. I think the one thing that did help me um, to avoid it being super difficult was keeping to a schedule. Um, I think one thing, you can lose a lot of motivation, I think, when you're not actually in the learning environment. So in with my academics, just like keeping to a schedule, um, writing it down, doing my work in the morning, taking some little time to myself to just exercise, um, just keeping to that schedule. I think that was really helpful. And I think that also helped um, a lot of my co-students. Well, I think, you know, you put your finger on something that's really important, and that is it takes a lot of discipline to do remote learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes a lot of discipline to be a college student. And that's one of the big uh, pitfalls for high school students when they come to college. So if any mom and dads are watching this, you might want to remind us if you have a, a first year student, uh, that freedom can be a little overwhelming. And how do I use my time wisely? How do I approach learning? And so again, as, as a future teacher, you can kind of see how to one of the biggest things you can do to help a child learn is to give them a kind of a system, a daily approach to learning to bring some kind of a discipline into their lives so they, they follow that. And so you had that before the pandemic, you were used to the model of going to class and you know, taking notes and doing all your work. And now suddenly you're put into a new model uh, where you have to do the same thing, but you don't have a bell going off or anyone telling you when the class starts or ends. So that's a real challenge, right? Definitely, it right. was definitely a challenge. Um, now you mentioned you know, the student government continued to meet. And what were some of the conversations like with the student government group? Um, well, we worked really hard to just keep that engagement level up. I think that was just our biggest conversation, um, how to keep everybody engaged, considering that we really weren't in person. 
Um, I think um, we were pretty successful in that. Like we had many virtual um, meetings in the end of the spring semester and almost every representative showed up. So that was super awesome. Um, I think the main things that we kind of just talked to them about in regards to um, staying engaged, um, just the importance of like having a social media presence because um, we can't necessarily be on campus and see everyone. So um, to have like clubs maintain their presence on their Instagrams, continuing to post to attract new students and also the students that have been members for so long. Um, and also one thing that we've talked about was um, SJC Engage, mm -hmm. um, which is a really important resource that we have. Um, it's a way for students to see which events are going on, whether they're virtual or on campus. So I think that was something we really tried to emphasize to all the students, not just those involved on the SJA Senate, but all of the students in the SJC community. Um, really just that importance of staying involved, even though we're not really always going to be here all the time. Yeah, but that's a, a really important thing is, is that the Student Government Association represents the students gives the students a voice and kind of comes together to talk about the important issues. But in the, in the case of the crisis, you're really trying to find ways to maintain the connection of the students with mm -hmm. the school. Because as a young person, you're already struggling with that sense of alienation, right? The sense of I, where do I belong in the world? What do I do with my life? And a crisis like this can be really unnerving and upsetting. And so for the student government to kind of actively try to reach out to the students and try to, to help them in that situation is a really critical role. So, you know, Alexandra, what you're doing is really important. You know, you're, you're doing something that is very valuable and it, it comes much more powerfully from the students themselves than if it was Janelle and I talking to them because they see someone that's like them, that's going through the same experience that says, look guys, we need to work together. We need to come together. And these are some things that we could be doing. And I, I suspect, we'll talk more about it in a moment, but I suspect those are some things that we'll be continuing on into, into the coming uh, semester. We're going to come back after a short break and complete our discussion of the, the place of student life and student government in the world of COVID-19. Welcome back to St. Joseph's College, Living Our Mission. We were discussing the importance of student life during COVID-19 here at St. Joseph's College. Uh, and my two guests that I have today are doing a wonderful job. Uh, they've just described the experiences they had when the crisis occurred. And so now I want to turn a little bit to the future. So Janelle, as Vice President for Student Life here in Long Island, um, what are some of the programs that you have in mind for the coming year that you think are going to be effective for the students? Um, so really for this upcoming semester, we're thinking about creative ways we can engage, right? And so how do we do that? How do we um, engage our students? So with career counseling, all of our normal um, programming that we've done in the past on ground, we're offering in person, right? So we know that this is a, a unsure time for students that may be graduating, right? Or wanting internships and, and thinking about how do we get them the opportunities so we're having a virtual career fair, right? So being able to still have opportunities to network. We're having different virtual networking with alumni events and having um, the students be able to engage in those ways so that, you know, the hardest part about what's going on right now is the what's next step. Mm -hmm. So so how do we engage them so that they feel secure? They know that St. Joseph College is here to support them and we're gonna do it in different ways. So career development, engaging them in those ways. We're having our student life and student involvement, which I know Alexandria is very involved with. They've been meeting all summer SGA. Mm -hmm. And really with the clubs and orgs, you know, all of the clubs and orgs have leadership. Mm -hmm. So thinking about as students, because like you said earlier, students know what students want, right? Mm -hmm. And so how do our students figure out ways they can have events, whether it's virtual club meetings, where it's grabbing goals, whether it's um, different events or speakers, we're going to bring in different um, types of speakers to be able to virtually meet with our students. Mm -hmm. I know last semester we did a um, spring fest with our virtual, so we had a virtual mm -hmm. comedian. You played in one of the we virtual did. events. We had, yes, we had our talent show. <laughs> a talent show, show where I you played. played. On the talent yes, show. that is correct. Um, so we're looking at different ways, right? And so some of the things are new, uncharted waters for us that we've never done before. But some of them are what we've always done. But now being able for students to have it in their homes or have it on their laptop 
laptops or engage in that way. And I think that it's important for us to just continue doing the good work that we do and having students understand that we're here for them, right? The whole SJC community is here for them, whether it's the staff, the faculty, and their fellow students, mm -hmm. we're all here to be able to support them. And so that goes beyond just career, campus life, counseling and wellness. Counseling and wellness is also important during this time. You know, there may be anxiety of being home. There may be different things that are going on because of classes. You may feel overwhelmed or stressed or need time management. All of these are important. So we're gonna have mediation groups and small groups that are available to students as well as individual counseling available to any students that they need. Um, and it's just really important for us to know or for the students to know that we're still here, right? And we're still here giving all the services that you've always had just maybe in a different way that you haven't had them mm -hmm. prior. Well, I, I know that's going to be a, a big comfort to the students to know that, you know, we have not only, you know, their, their wonderful professors and the staff to support them academically, but they also have people that they can turn to if they're having challenges in their private world uh, and, and, and struggles of various types. Uh, our students, and, and they're no different from students all over the country, they come to the college uh, and they frequently do have some pretty serious issues and struggles that they're fighting against, even in normal times. Mm -hmm. And so we do have a wonderful uh, program of counseling here for the various mm -hmm. types of students, academic and personal. Uh, and that's part of our whole approach right. of educating the whole student. Exactly. So we're interested not only in the mind, but the heart mm -hmm. and the soul, the spiritual development of the mm -hmm. student. Um, and you mentioned also that uh, some, uh, uh, some programs on the topic of diversity. Can you talk about that for the coming year? Yes, so we are, you know, giving everything, given our campus community, all the students that we support, you know, we have very diverse students mm -hmm. in different ways, and it's important to be able to celebrate, right? So we wanna celebrate diversity amongst everyone. Mm -hmm. And so we have different clubs and orgs that do different events to do that, as well as we, as a um, Office of Student Involvement and Intercultural Engagement, also put on programs and events to support that. Now that we're in a possible remote or virtual world, we're also collaborating with Brooklyn and Long Island to mm -hmm. be able to do cross cross community collaborations mm -hmm. with events that are open to both campuses, mm -hmm. as well as I know that there's a diversity council that is looking at the different aspects of our whole entire community, mm -hmm. whether that's in the classroom, outside of the classroom, whether it's embedded in the um, pedagogy of the courses, all of these are different aspects and different ways that we're looking at it. And I think it's important, the same way we look at the students holistically, I think it's important that this is also one aspect of our students' experience and making sure that we celebrate and they're going into diverse worlds. Absolutely. And so that we're preparing them for for these diverse worlds. And it's something the students want. The yes. students want us to talk about these important issues that they're struggling with themselves. And so diversity is, and inclusion are certainly very mm -hmm. important to us. We have a long tradition here at St. Joseph's through the Sisters of St. Yes. Joseph's uh, of reaching out into the community and finding ways to unify and reconcile people. Yes. And so this is our opportunity. And I see that as a really powerful and important goal for, for student life mm -hmm. in the coming year. Um, so, Alexandra, when, when you look at the coming year and you think about your courses uh, and, and the activities that are planned, are, are there things that excite you? What are some of the things that look interesting for the coming year? Um, well, overall, I'm just really excited to start up again. I have really missed seeing everyone. Um, and even though I know it's going to be virtual in aspects, I'm just really excited to start that socialization process again up with mm -hmm. uh, my peers and my professors. Mm -hmm. um, what looks exciting for me um, as a member of SGA, as well as the orientation team, welcoming all the new students. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm really looking forward to. Um, we've had many orientation team meetings over the summer um, with all of the team. And we've kind of just talked about how we plan on welcoming the new students because it's kind of overwhelming for all of us, but we're already kind of adjusted to the college experience. So it's more like, our job, I feel like, to help those freshmen along this journey because it's such unfamiliar territory to them. So um, that's something I think I'm most excited about mm -hmm. is really just helping those freshmen adjust to this college and get to love it as much as I do. And, and of course, for those that, for, for the viewers, freshman orientation, first year student orientation is all about helping students who have been in high school mm -hmm. uh, make that transition from being a high school student to being a college student. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, some of the pitfalls that can occur. And we already touched on one, and that is the issue of scheduling and planning. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I know you have some, some activities planned for 
uh, for the orientation. What would be some of the kinds of the topics that you're going to talk about in orientation with your new um, students? At orientation, um, it's going to be, I guess, just um, more of a welcome. But I think um, one thing that we're really going to try to um, send the message to, to them is just to really get involved. Um, I think it really changed your whole experience. And I feel like they're told it so many times, they get involved, get involved. But it's hard to like take that step and step out of your comfort zone. So I think that's one thing that we're really gonna talk about at orientation. We're gonna have days where we're gonna introduce them to all the clubs that we have to offer at this college. Um, and I think that's gonna kind of just be like our main theme, I think, cause they're gonna be um, virtual, I'm sure for many of their classes. Um, I think just getting involved is um, of the utmost importance. Absolutely, I, I, you know, I think that um, I say this all, also to the new students when I see them is it doesn't really matter what you choose. Like don't don't spend a lot of time worrying about whether you're going to join the right club or not. Join something, mm -hmm. and then you can decide later if that was working out for you. But that idea of getting out of your comfort zone, leaving your shell, and and reaching out, uh, and then of course as you have done to be put into a position of leadership is such great training. Then later on, when you go off uh, campus, when you, when you leave St. Joseph's, you know, this has prepared you for running meetings and for talking to people, for dealing with difficult situations. And that's why someday you're gonna be a school superintendent, right? Because <laughs> we've produced a lot of them. Uh, I, have, I have several on the board of trustees. So, you know, St. Joseph's has produced a lot of leaders. Mm -hmm. And it's because we have a campus that's small enough mm -hmm. where if the student wants to, they can have an incredible leadership experience. So by the time they leave here, they'll have enough experience to run a small corporation. And in fact, the Student Government Association does run kind of a small corporation. So it's, it's really, uh, uh, you know, Alexandra, you're, you're absolutely right that, you know, getting the students to take the chance, you know, uh, I think what holds us back in life frequently is we don't wanna take risks. Risks are scary. Mm -hmm. uh, helping students to overcome that initial fear and to feel supported in doing that. And again, I think that's one of the things we do so well here. We're small enough to where we can come to the student, approach them individually and say, hey, you have a talent here. Let's see if we can put it to use. So I think the work that you are doing with student government is really critical and very, very important. Um, Janelle, when, when you think about the, the, uh, the coming year and the challenges that some of the students are having, what do you think some of the uh, 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 challenges may be for the students uh, who, who, are, who are trying to exist during this difficult time? I would say there's a few challenges. I think the transition. So mm -hmm. if there's any new students, the transition from either their freshman, um, their senior year, college, senior year high school to their freshman year mm -hmm. college, if they're a transfer student, transitioning to a new institution. Um, I also think that the whole idea that we've been living in this now for what, five months, right? And so how do we now adapt and continue to be successful? You know, it was hard in the spring semester because it was new, right? So it just happened, it was abrupt, there was no transition. But coming into the fall, most students registering for their courses know and understand that what they're signing up for is different than any of their college experience before. And I think that, you know, going into it and understanding that, you know, there may be some changes that we don't predict, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's still a lot there out there that we don't know, mm -hmm. but, you know, really, really making the time and putting the effort into your courses, creating the schedules, kind of like Alexandria said, mm -hmm. ensuring that you reach out when you need help. Mm -hmm. And I think that's some of my concern as mm -hmm. an administrator. Mm -hmm. is that students who may need help in seeking help find us, right? How do they find mm -hmm. us? So if it's that they need to seek academic counseling, right? Or if they need counseling or if they need tutoring, that they know that they, we're still here, that mm -hmm. we're still available and that mm -hmm. we're here as a resource and that they don't get lost in the shuffle, that mm -hmm. they reach out to their faculty members. Um, but I think that as you've made a great note of, we're a small community, right? So one of the things that has resonated with me, even in my short time here, is that the students feel supported by the staff and faculty. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's our job to continue that during these unknown times. Mm -hmm so that students still know that they can access us and reach us and that we're here and we're here to support them to be successful, mm -hmm. both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. 
And then the other part of it is I think the any of the mental health issues, the anxiety, mm -hmm. um, anything that might be going home, you know, normally students get to separate class from home. And right now it's all meshed together. Even for us, it's meshed together where mm -hmm. work is meshed in with mm -hmm. home. Um, and so how do we create safe, create spaces at home for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Do we get a little corner where we know this is our homework corner? Mm -hmm. Or do we get a little part of the house that kind of separates it out for us so that we can find the balance? And mm -hmm. I think that is important and taking the time for ourselves. Self-care is going to be important as well. Mm -hmm. You know, understanding, well, maybe I need a break. Maybe I did two remote classes back to back. I might have some homework, but might it might be a nice time for me to get out the house and take mm -hmm. a walk or mm -hmm. do something healthy mm -hmm. um, that gives me the space and separation mm -hmm. so that I'm not overwhelmed or that I'm not feeling that, you know, sense of, you know, it's hard when you're quarantined or it's mm -hmm. hard when you're inside all day mm -hmm. and you don't have the social interaction. Maybe mm -hmm. I call one of my friends. Mm -hmm. Maybe I go on this virtual club mm -hmm. meeting that mm -hmm. I didn't plan on going on. I think all of those things are going to be important um, for our students to continue just to just to be able to thrive. Right. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think that, you know, sometimes we're we're balancing between surviving and thriving. But I think it's important that we want to try to get to the place where we're thriving. And so hopefully they know what we have here so that it'll assist them in that process. Well, I, I suspect our students are going to be in very good hands with you <laughs> uh, because I think you've just run down the the really critical points and and I think that that whole issue of not being afraid to ask for help is so important mm -hmm. on that note I'm gonna stop I want to thank both of you uh, Janelle and Alexander for being with me today on living our mission both of you live the mission I'm so proud of both of you and the work you're doing and thank you so much thank you. and thank all of you